That was how it began, or should I say ended. I was hurrying home to my wife and kids, and I guess I didn't look too closely when I crossed the intersection. But then Joe Smith, who was driving the car, wasn't on his toes either. He was thinking about that big deal at the office. It hurt pretty bad at first, but that soon passed. It was a lot tougher on my wife and kids and on Joe Smith and his family. Well, anyway, I'm an ex-pedestrian now. I'm one of that not-so-exclusive group of 34,000 people who are killed each year by automobiles. Over a million more are injured in Maine. Newspaper reports of automobile wrecks and statistics on the mounting toll taken by accidents are not particularly impressive. Statistics don't bleed or scream with pain. You can't cripple a statistic or smash its face to a jelly or cave its chest. Statistics don't show what happens when children are ground under the wheels of a car or when a woman is thrown through a windshield. parade of accident victims goes on and on, the hurt, the maimed, and the dying. Here is death, not peaceful death, but raw and ugly death that comes as a mercy to torn, ragged bodies. Two out of every three accidents are caused by errors in human judgment. If you, the living, will drive and walk with courtesy, caution, and common sense, this needless slaughter can be immeasurably reduced. Pedestrian and motorists must respect each other's rights. There are several important safety rules that pedestrians must bear in mind. Always cross streets at intersections where drivers expect you. Wherever traffic is controlled by signals or a police officer, obey the signals or officer and do not attempt to cross until the go signal is given. Stand on the sidewalk when waiting to cross intersections. Try to save a few seconds by stepping down from the curb or this may happen to you. Be extremely cautious when crossing intersections where there are no signals. A pedestrian must be constantly alert. Look to your left. To your right and behind you. Being struck down from behind is one of the most frequent pedestrian accidents. The same precaution should be taken when crossing from the opposite direction. A car may be coming up the street behind you and turn into the street you are crossing. Don't do the unexpected. Drivers are not mind readers. If you change your mind about which way you want to go, do it on the sidewalk, not in an intersection where changing your mind may be fatal. When you have determined it is safe to cross, do so quickly and with certainty. Don't loiter in intersections. Jaywalking is the most hazardous possible means of crossing. You are more than doubling your chances of being run down. The driver is concerned not only with looking out for pedestrians, but also with watching signals and other vehicles. Adults must not build bad pedestrian habits in children by leading them across streets in mid-block, crossing against signals and other unsafe practices simply because it is expedient to do so. Traffic safety must be taught by word and action to our children as soon as they are able to walk. Many municipalities in conjunction with schools are doing excellent work along these lines. Children should be cautioned not to play in the streets. Last year, nearly 900 children were killed and several thousand injured.
Hitching rides on the back of trucks, streetcars, and automobiles is another dangerous practice through which many children have been badly injured or killed. Blind spots where visibility is impaired for either motorist or pedestrian by other vehicles or similar obstructions are danger areas. When the motorist or pedestrian approaches a blind spot, they should proceed with caution. Safe visibility for pedestrian and motorists under these conditions is non-existent. Many states give the pedestrian right-of-way at crosswalks, but don't entirely rely on the motorist to look out for you. Look before you cross. Most pedestrian fatalities are caused by the pedestrian's own negligence. Crossing in front of a bus from which you have just alighted is generally sure fire for a ride in an ambulance. Never get out of your car on the street side unless you are absolutely certain there are no cars approaching. Entering and leaving your car on the curb side is the safest practice. Crossing in mid-block is dangerous. The driver of a parked car may suddenly back up and crush you against the other car. Or you may be run down by an approaching car. The driver seldom sees you in time to stop. If you walk along roads or highways where there are no sidewalks, Walk facing the flow of traffic so that you may see an approaching car and step off the roadway. Never walk with your back to approaching traffic. You might be hit or cause a car to swerve, causing a bad accident. You, the driver, must constantly be on the alert and not exceed a safe rate of speed. You are driving along at 30 miles an hour. Suddenly a child runs out 90 feet in front of you. She's paralyzed with fright. You slam on your brakes and come to a halt just seven feet from the child. But if you were going just five miles an hour faster, you would have traveled 30 feet farther. You would have struck the child and traveled 20 feet beyond. Fatalities among older people are high due to their slower reactions and their misjudging of distances traveled by vehicles. You, the motorist, must be especially cautious when handicapped persons or children are in or near the roadway. Their safety is your responsibility. Traffic at night is very hazardous for pedestrians. The pedestrian who steps out into the path of a car at night is suddenly splashed with what he feels to be brilliant illumination. It is difficult for him, no matter how often he himself drives a car at night, to avoid feeling that the headlight glare makes him stand out clearly and boldly. To the driver, the pedestrian illuminated by his headlights is just another object in the midst of a thousand other such vague shapes. Dark or neutral colored clothes reflect very little light, so that it is almost impossible for a motorist to see a pedestrian until he is within a few feet of him. If, however, the pedestrian wears light-colored clothing or carries something that reflects light, like a newspaper, the driver can instantly see these spots of reflected light. The best rule for walking at night is consider yourself invisible and walk accordingly. And speaking of being invisible, that reminds me that my time is about up. But before I go, I thought you might like to know what happened to Joe Smith, the driver of the car that ran me down. Well, the court awarded my wife $50,000. Of course, Joe hasn't got that kind of money, so he'll have to pay some each month for a long, long time. It's tough. He has a family of his own, too. Well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs>